person may be born with genitals that appear between male or female. So biological sex, which determines if someone was born male, female, or intersex, is determined right at birth. Gender identity, however, is different. A trans person who is assigned male at birth, but identifies as a woman, is considered a trans woman. Remember, biological sex is different than gender identity. Remember, biological sex is different than gender identity. Remember, biological sex is different than gender identity. Yeah, so the first is the, the very language of you were born and I'm not biological somehow, like I don't think I'm a cyborg. So like this idea that like, oh, you're not a biological woman. Well, I am a woman, that's a fact. I am female, so all my identity records, my racing license, my medical records all say female, mm -hmm. right? And I'm pretty sure I made a biological stop. So I'm a biological female mm -hmm. as well. Like I said, this boils down to, are trans women really women? Are they really female? Because if you think yes, then we belong competing with other women. So it's an extreme indignity to say, I believe you're a woman, except for sport. Ladies and gentlemen, you have been gaslit. Your capacity for empathy and rationality have been hijacked, not so much by nefarious people, but by a pathological and destructive and manipulative ideology. It's important for you to understand the mechanism behind the gaslighting, and that's what we'll go over in this video. It started off as a reasonable distinction between sex and gender. The fact that males can embody feminine traits and females can embody masculine traits is understood and agreed upon even by people who many consider to be horrifyingly transphobic. You could say with reasonable certainty that one in 10 women has a masculine temperament and one in 10 men has a feminine temperament. And so that's a lot of people. I am genderqueer, trans mask, and queer. I'm trans and uh, I use he, him pronouns. Yeah, and I use he, they pronouns. And so there, there are, have been people who play at the edges of gender identity forever. And fair enough, and sometimes that's even admirable if it's done in a sophisticated way. And it's charismatic. So you see it in Mick Jagger, you see it in David Bowie. Mm -hmm. You see it, and you see it in people like Madonna as well, because Madonna had a hard edge, you know, that mm -hmm. was very masculine. And all the Marvel superhero women have a hard masculine right. edge. And so we find that charismatic because those people are also integrated. But gender ideology is only partly about creating space and empathy for transgender people, just as fundamentalist Christianity is only partly about caring for the poor. Both of these ideologies are built upon much deeper and more consequential assertions about the nature of reality. And gender ideology, which is a sect of the religion known as postmodernism, is based upon the belief that literally everything, including knowledge and reality itself, is a social construct. So, postmodernism. This is where Jordan, Jordan Peterson makes me want to like throw chairs when he talks about this. <laughs> Comes out of French philosophy uh, in the 1960s and 70s and 80s. Michel Foucault is the most famous example of a, of a French postmodernist. The central argument that was made by Foucault and postmodernists was that there is no natural essence to anything, that everything is a social construct. So the trans movement, for instance, right, that started from postmodernism. It's critical to understand that virtually all of the gender identity extremism you witness is the direct product of this ideology. It's the same ideology that produced this moment in a debate between Dr. Tom Bogardus and the postmodern gender ideologue named Vosch. You gave the example, one of your arguments against the biological definition of uh, woman was that we didn't know about chromosomes many years ago. Well, first of all, I don't think biological sex is defined in terms of chromosomes, but let's just use the example of water. Maybe we could agree that water is H2O. That was true even before we knew about chemistry. That was the definition of water before anybody knew anything about chemistry, before we knew about H2O. Back when Aristotle thought it, water was just an element, nevertheless, this it was H2O. True. I'm sorry? This isn't true. That water has not always been H2O? Yeah. All you have to do is cross the Mexican border. And over there, it's aqua that's H2O, not water. Aqua means water. Aqua is water. A different they, term. Uh, actually, it's agua. It's not aqua, right? And we're referring <laughs> to terms and definitions here. No, I'm referring to water, the stuff that fills lakes and rivers. The I'm stuff not that fills about the word one. Many things fill lakes and rivers. Okay. If everything is a social construct, then there are no facts, only socially constructed terms and definitions that masquerade as facts. Aqua means water. Aqua is water. It's a different they, term. Uh, actually, it's agua. It's not aqua, right? And we're referring <laughs> to terms and definitions here. 
It's this philosophy that allows Vosh to challenge the idea that water is literally H2O, and it's exactly the same philosophy that allows gender ideologues to claim trans women are literally biological women. Right, and I'm pretty sure I made a biological stuff, so I'm a biological female mm -hmm. as well. And because this philosophy dominates academia, it has become the dominant way of thinking in academia, the medical establishment has followed suit, and now vulnerable people are being gaslit and paying the price. But they kind of like didn't protect me from myself. <laughs> Gender affirming care is life saving, medically necessary, age appropriate, and a critical tool for healthcare providers. As a pediatrician, when it comes to making sure kids are healthy and happy, I know how important care that affirmed someone's true identity can be. And I can only find two videos on how to get um, HRT through Planned Parenthood, so I'll just share my experience with you guys. Here's the needle. There's the estrogen inside of it. Okay. Yeah, it was kind of an echo chamber for me where everybody was telling me to do it. And as soon as I started it, everyone was telling me how much more attractive I was. They were going through all my older pictures and saying, wow, you looked really unhappy, but now you're so happy. And that was a lie because I really wasn't happy, but everybody was telling you that you were happy, so you felt that you had to keep going with it. Now, the disastrous effects this pathological belief system has had on young kids is not going unnoticed. Erica Anderson is a trans woman and psychologist who specializes in working with trans people. And in her words, It is my considered opinion that due to some of the, I'll just call it sloppy healthcare work, that we're going to have more young adults who will regret having gone through this process. We used to have tomboys uh, right. in, in America. Where did, the tom where did the tomboys go? You know, uh, mm. and some, some critics have said, they're being encouraged to become boys, you know, that they're, right. they're, they're saying, I'm a, I'm a boy, I'm trans. And, uh, and I think there's some reason to seriously consider whether that's true. The reason that people are being convinced they are a different sex than they really are is a direct consequence of postmodern gender ideology propagating itself through mass media. And the best way to counteract this pathological ideology is through the honest articulation of a common sense perspective that is rooted in empathy and inclusion for transgender people. And so looking at the way in which we operate in that sense and just saying, look, there are things where we should reasonably be taking a bit of a back step to because we are not biologically female, but we want to be seen socially as female. It's very much a, you know, everyone kind of has to work together here. Why don't we just focus more on what we can bring to the table as just trans women. We don't have to be seen as biological women. We can still just shorthand call ourselves women with a suffix on there being, yeah, we are trans women. Like, surely that's fair enough. Surely that's a bit of a compromise there. And so as more reasonable people articulate pushback to unreasonable ideas, then there's a chance that this mass hysteria dies out sooner rather than later. Until then, Good luck and Godspeed.